The Final Fantasy XIV hype is at an all-time high. Endwalker is coming, and so are the new players. Hi, I'm Lewis Cool from Great Reason, and I've been watching your streams. I've been lurking in secret, and I've been taking some notes. See, we've been playing since 1.0, and we have the tattoos on our back to prove it. And you know, paying $10 instead of $15 for your sub, it just makes you better than some people. Short answer, being vegan just makes you better than most people. Bingo. With so many customizable options, it's very easy to miss the quality of life changes available. Some of these surprised each other when we went over the list, so maybe you'll see something you didn't know. Let's get into it. Timestamps are at the bottom. The enemy casting bar is one of the most important pieces of information on your HUD. It tells you when a mechanic is happening and it lets you prepare for it. It could be a tank buster or like a weird new dance move or even the raid wide damage move. The problem is it's freaking tiny. What is this? And it's probably not in an ideal spot on your screen because it's stuck underneath the enemy's health bar. You can detach the enemy casting bar, resize it, move it around wherever you like, and so you'll never have to wonder what move just killed your Dragoon. First, go to your HUD settings under System, select Target Info, and click the gear icon. Next, click Display Target Information Independently. Now back out, and you'll have full control over the placement of your progress bar and status effects. Side note is that healers will probably need to use focus target for this, which is just forward slash focus target. You'll likely be targeting your tanks and your DPS through much of the encounters, so you won't be able to leave your cursor on the enemy and see their information. Really, anyone can use focus target, but most roles will be targeting the big bad, so it has limited applications for them. I found it to be really helpful to make a focus target macro instead of typing it out every time. In the same vein of the last tip, you can set the enemy HP bar to show their remaining hit point percentage. This is very useful in certain fights like primals and trials where they have moves that will go off at certain hit point thresholds. So for like DPS checks and other abilities, like the 300 worms that crawl out of Titan's loincloth at 47% hit points, it's kind of important to know that. For some reason, this is in a totally different menu. Go to System, Character Configuration, UI Settings, and then the HUD tab. All the way at the bottom, there's a checkbox for HP Percentage. Sorry, keyboard players, uh, this next step is for controllers, so you can just, if you want, skip ahead. Playing on controller provides some strong movement ability at the expense of key mapping efficiency. So if you're like Stone, you have some precious real estate on your hotbar taken up by the Sprint ability. You can actually map the sprint and any other ability to your R3 and L3 buttons, which are the stick clicks. You can do this with user macros. In the system configuration menu, go to wireless controller settings, controller customization, and set either stick to execute macro 98 or 99. Then create the macro on screen here. Pause for effect. With this setting, any macro you assign to slots 98 and 99, you'll be able to use on your thumbsticks. So you can do this to better evade AOEs or just run around town by just clicking a stick, like a regular video game. Additionally, you can set up side hotbars and place a copy of your longer cooldown abilities on them. See, on controller, you don't have enough space, so you'll usually be setting your longer abilities on a second or even third hotbar and swap between them. With this, you'll always know what's ready on your alternate pallet slots. You can set these hotbars to hide unassigned slots so that you don't have a bunch of little empty squares all over your screen. All of this can be done under Character Config, Hotbars, Display. Are you one of those sad, sad jobs that are forced to use a circle placeable effect for one of your abilities? And you go to try to place it, and you drag it along, and it goes very slowly, and by the time you've used it, your GCD has already been waiting and available, and you've lost some DPS numbers. Well, I have good news for you because you can macro this. What I'm saying is macros are awesome. So check the screen, here's my macro. Just fill in the blanks for the ability that you wanna use. You can macro any ability and you can use forward slash macro icon to make that icon the same as the ability you wanna use. This will also display the cooldown for it and it'll just look like a regular ability, except for Blue Mage because Final Fantasy hates Blue Mage. The line M error off is optional, but it removes the annoying error message that happens when you use a macro too soon after another macro. The next two lines are used to either target your enemy, or if nothing is selected, it will target yourself. 
And this way, your ability will always go off and it'll prioritize having a target. Or if no target, then it'll just land on your feet. Not as important as macros, but still very helpful are keybinds. The game provides a good automatic selection of keybinds, but there are some things missing, and this is really up to personal preference. But things like cross world link shell, if you have friends on another world, you'll end up trying to type out to them and typing the entire thing cross world link shell, and you type the whole thing out, and by the time you do that, you've been killed by whatever you should have been doing instead of ERPing with the cute cat girl on the link shell. Keybinds are under the system menu where you can set up anything you need. Hopefully, you know about Chloe's Wondrous Tales book. And if you don't, you'll figure it out after you get to Heavensward. It's at the end of Heavensward, so, you know, if you're not there yet, it's not really a spoiler, but you eventually get a book that has a bunch of tasks in it, and by doing them every week, you get a bunch of, um, you know, rewards and prizes. Something that even I didn't know until last week was that completing that book gives you half a level on the job, exactly half a level, so whatever job you're on. So stop handing them in like me with your max level job and start getting some free XP for your side hustles. Healing can be overwhelming, especially when you don't really understand what all this mess is. When I started healing, I had a terrible time figuring out what was a buff, what was a debuff, and what I could even remove with Asuna. Thankfully, it's super easy when you know what to look for. An icon that looks like an up arrow on the box is a buff. If it looks like a down arrow, it's a debuff. And if it's a debuff with a blue line at the top, that means that you can remove it with Asuna. Your HUD is a mess, and we're all embarrassed for you. Dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizard. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't, or he won't. If you would rather see the game instead of the Technicolor nightmare of unicorn rainbow vomit that happens when more than three people get together, this is for you. No, no. What happened? He hates bright lights. First, you can resize all of your windows and customize your HUD. That's the most basic thing I can say right here, and I'm sorry that I have to say it. You can also set up four HUD presets, which can be very helpful when you're going between chill out story time to sweaty try hard rating to healing, where you spend most of your time playing whack-a-mole staring at your party list because your DPS doesn't know what the big orange circles mean. Additionally, you can reduce or completely remove the floating damage numbers, though this is personal preference. I prefer to keep the floating effects because it'll tell you visually when a buff will fall off, but Reducing the size can help with visibility. So to find this, go to character configuration, UI settings, HUD, flying text. Lastly, but actually more importantly than everything else, you can change the intensity of effects that show only to you. So you can change how effects show for your own party, for you, for other players that aren't in your party or in your alliance. And by turning this off, you can turn your fake ground from this to this. This is all done under Character Config, Control Settings, Character, Battle Effects Settings. Inventory clutter is the worst, especially when it's filled with old, dusty dungeon gear. If you, like me, usually pass on all the dungeon gear when you're running your dailies, stop it. Stop it. Get some help. With desynthing, you can turn that garbage into, well, probably other garbage, but it's garbage you can sell on the market board. So you might get lucky. Some of the gear has some decent pocket change that they can turn into. And while leveling your descenting skill, it's uh, you know, win-win. Win, win, win. The higher your descenting skill goes, the better chance you have at getting decent items out of this. So it's worthwhile. To desynth, you'll need to be at least level 30 or above in whatever craft is required. So dungeon gear usually falls into either cloth, leather, armor, blacksmith, or goldsmithing. So get each one of those to 30, which is super easy. How easy, you ask? Well, if you're extra lazy, just hand in some craftables every day to your grand company. The list is available under timers. Alternatively, check out Quite GG's crafting guide, which shows you how to craft really quickly in no time at all. Quite GG is a great content creator and streamer and has really good Final Fantasy guides, so go check them out. You can quick synth anything for XP as long as you have manually crafted it once. So this is a very easy way to gain those early levels. Just hit quick synth 99 and I don't know, go get a snack. Tomes, they're always rotating. I don't even know how to keep up. What's the new tome? What's the last tome? They're introducing a new tome. No matter what, they're never gonna get rid of Tomes of Poetics, which means you will eventually cap out on them and have no use for these worthless, disgusting, useless tomes. But with a bit of creative bartering, you can trade them for some decent gil. 
We have a couple of ways to do this, but the number one way that I do it is I will trade them for Thanalan Topsoil. Thanalan Topsoil is the only way to make the Varian Onions, and you use the gardening plot to make them. You use these onions to raise your Chocobo's level past the level cap. What the hell are you talking about? Oh shit, buddy, I gotta dig a little deeper. There's no Pepe, so you gotta be kidding me! I got boxes full of Pepe! To do this, head to Idleshire and talk to his Mena. Select Special Arms and purchase all of the unidentifiable ore that you can. Then go over to Bertana next to her, go to Uncanny Knickknacks, and trade that ore for Thanalan Topsoil. If Thanalan Topsoil isn't your fancy, there are many other craftables that you can buy and sell, but this varies from patch to patch, so you'll have to check the market board and see what's in season. The real endgame is mount collecting and glamour fashion. Some of the best mounts and fashion are locked behind the golden saucer, which might not be everyone's favorite activity. Luckily, if you hate fun as much as I do, you can turn this joyful area into a weekly checklist of tasks by doing the fashion report and cack pot every Sunday. You could do these on other days, but they line up perfectly on Sunday, where the fashion report is still open and the cack pot drawing has just closed, meaning you only have to experience forced joy once per week. We are a sex babom. We are here to make money and sell out and stuff. Fashion report is posted every week on Reddit, so search for fashion report and then dress appropriately for an easy 60 to 65,000 MGP. Then run over and exchange your probably losing scratchy lotto tickets in for new losing scratchy lotto tickets. Fashion report is downstairs from Wonder Square East and Cackpot is the Cackpot. Just teleport to the Cackpot. Uh, I mean, why, why is this a tip? I hope it was helpful. We stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday nights. Grapes out.